Hello everyone, so in this video, let us talk about uh, another medium level problem from lead code. The problem name is find the longest subarray with at most k frequency. So let us talk about the problem statement first. You are given an integer array nums and an integer k. So you are given an integer array and a number k. Okay. The frequency of an element x is the number of times it occurs in the array. So as you can see, whatever frequency of any number, let's say one is occurred three times, two is occurred three times, two, three is occurred two times. So that is the frequency. Okay. Then you can see here that the array is called good if the frequency of each element in this array is less than or equal to k. Okay, uh, array is called good if whatever array that you have has every element frequency less than or equal to k. Now you have to return the longest good sub array. Okay, sub array is a continuous non empty sequence. Okay, so you have to somehow find a continuous sequence. You have to find out the length of it, the longest one, uh, such that all the elements inside that has the frequency of less than or equal to k. Uh, as you can see, the output is the longest is one till three. This one till this one. This is the longest because it's just continuous. We have to find out a continuous array such that all the elements inside it has the frequency less than or equal to k. And you have to find out the longest one. Now, whenever I see a uh, subarray questions, continuous array, we have to find out a, a left and a right of a subarray. What you can see, like I've already drawn it. One of the solutions we can use is two pointer techniques. Because we have to find out two pointers, a left and a right of a subarray that actually satisfy the condition. Now, how can we actually use two pointers here? So it's pretty much simple when you have two pointers and we have to find out a particular solution like this. So you have to think in that direction and check that whether a particular logic can be used here or not. If it is not, then we have to think in another way. But if you have a possible logic, then try to like use it here. So we have to somehow gradually use two pointers. Let's say we have two pointers L and R. Okay, on, a, on the first element. We can always take the first element because K is, as you can see, K is for seeing the consider as well. K is up, up to 10 to bar 5, but it is the less value of 1. So we can always take one element. Okay, obviously. So uh, we can always take the first element. So what we can do is that we can, let's take this as an array. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 1, then 2, then 3, then 1, and 2. So what you can do is that we can take this as an L and this is the L that is the, the first part and R start from here, this is the array. So can we take this? So we have to somehow know that whatever array that we are forming, the frequency of all the elements inside it should be less than or equal to K. So for storing the frequency, you can make a map. Okay, uh, because uh, map can be useful because the constraints are large and we have to only store very small values. So you can use a map as well here. So what you can use that, for every element that we're taking inside the array, we can store inside the map that, okay, one has occurred one time and two has occurred also one time if we have taken inside the array. Okay. Now we will now move my array. Uh, let's say this eraser, eraser. So let's say remove this and this. Now R has to move to here on this next one. So I can also take this as well. So now three has occurred one time. So now let us move my R to the next point. That is this. Now, as you can see here that uh, again, we can uh, we can take this inside the array. So the array is now increasing like this. Can we take this? Can we take this inside the sub array that we are forming? Uh, yes, we can because our K is equal to two and we have only one that has already occurred equal to one. So we can also encapsulate one more because our limit is two. Uh, so we can now take this one as well. And, and my now I have in this sub array, one is occurred two times. So now we'll increment this. Now R is moved to here. Two is again occurring two times. So this will increment two. Increment that. This is equal to two. So now the total length, whatever we are at is R minus L. That is the total length plus one. Okay. That is the total length of the survey that we have taken till now. Now my R comes to here. When my R comes to here, what you can see here is that now we have to take one more one, but our, our maximum once I can take is two and it is already there. 
So I cannot take one. So what we have to do is that now we have to move my left to the right side. Okay, this point has to move to the right hand side one by one. Till that again, my map has only one at max two times. Okay, so we have to, if I have to take this one, my total number of ones has come down to three, but now I can only take two, two ones. So I have to somehow move my L to the right hand side so that I have to somehow remove one one from the map so that my map or that sub area that I'm forming has again all the frequencies less than equal to K only. So we have to do that. And in the end, uh, whatever is the maximum among all this particular process, whatever is the maximum L R minus L plus one, whatever is the maximum sub area that we have seen throughout this whole process is the final answer. So that is a, a two pointer technique. Uh, there are multiple more problems on my channel as well. You can check out those as well to how to perform and practice two pointer technique. So let's move on to the code part now. Uh, what we have done here is that we have created a maximum that whatever is the maximum possible sub area throughout the whole process that we have seen, we have to mark it as one because we can always take one element at least. This is the answer also. What is the maximum uh, sub area we can take? The maximum is we have to find out, but the minimum can always be one. Why? Because we can always take any one element and that can answer be answer. Then this is the map that will use to show the frequencies. Then because we have already taken the first element, we will add that inside the map that the first element is taken and that is occurred one time. So this map is to store what is the element and how is the frequency of it, how much time that has occurred. So one, the first element that is the in the array, one, one has occurred one time that is stored. And this is I and J, like you can say left and right. So this is the left part that is denoted by J and this is the right part that is denoted by I. Now what we have done is that for every element, that say let's when my when my when my R is moving towards the right hand side, what we have to check that, or let's say this I is moving towards the right hand side, we have to check that. Can we take the current element or not? And how you can check that? Whatever is the frequency of that particular element inside the map, that is the frequency plus one because I'm taking this. If I'm taking this, if it is less than equal to k, which means that I can easily take it. If I easily take it, I will like take it, put it inside the map, and check that what is the maximum I have gone till now. So we have to increment the maximum. Because now my right hand side has moved, so the sub array has increased. If the sub array is increased, we have to find out what is the maximum sub array we have seen till now. So we have to update the maximum. But if by adding one more element inside the frequency map, we can see that if that has exceeded the k value, so what we have to do is we have to make another value. This is the value inside the cells that will move my left pointer towards the right till that, till the condition that the number inside the, the map is greater than one, like greater than K. If the, the frequency is greater than K, then we have to keep on moving towards the right hand side, this left pointer, so that it should become less than K, so that we can inculcate the one on the right hand side. So what element I am on, I can only take it inside the map if the left pointer move towards the right hand side and the sub array that we have to form doesn't have all the elements less than equal to k, then only we can take it. Okay. So we will keep on doing a while loop. It will keep on moving towards the right hand side until this condition is met. And when this condition doesn't met, then only we'll increment the total in increment that number inside the sub array because now we have moved my left pointer towards the right hand side so that now our frequency is less than k. So now we can take that particular element inside the sub array and that is fine. In the end, when we have done all of that, we can just actually check that. What is the maximum I have seen till now? Maximum sub that we have seen till now and just it. That's it. Now, the particular tangibility of this particular problem is O of n only, though you can see two for loops and while loop nested inside it. But the tangibility is O of n only. Why? Because this is doing one for loop. This for loop is one. That is fine. But this nested will be used to move the. So there is one right pointer and one left pointer. They're not moving in a nested form. They're both moving at max to one time in the right direction. This is moving one time, one by one to the right direction, this for loop. And this will also move one time to the right direction one time. So to inculcate the changes in the sub array. So both of them can be moved at least one time towards the right hand side. So it will be O of 2n, not O of n or n square. So it is O of 2n, which is inculcate down to O of n only. So this overall complexity of, the, of this particular solution is O of n only. And that's a complete logic and a good part for this particular video. If you still have any doubts, you can mention in the comment box for this particular video. I will see you in the next one. Take it coding and bye.